I think that education savings accounts are the gold standard in terms of providing the most flexibility and customized educational options. However, you know, in other states we've seen tax credit scholarships, those have also been successful. So we're really excited going into the session to see someone like Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick have leadership on this issue, and we're certainly excited to see what legislative proposals come out. Education savings accounts, give me the basics of, of what is that? If somebody turns on the TV, doesn't know what it is. Yeah. So an education savings account is a truly customizable way to choose your child's education. So if your neighborhood school isn't working for you, you can elect to remove your child from public school and get the state funds that are used to educate them. Once they're provided to the parent, they can use those funds for a variety of educational expenses, including tutoring, therapy, and accredited private school. So we've seen a lot of families with special needs students take advantage of these programs because they know their child better than anyone, and they're able to customize their child's education in a variety of approved educational settings. Who would run this program through the state? It kind of depends on how um, the legislation is written. However, in other states we've seen the Treasury Department or the Education Department. Our suggestion in Texas would be that the Comptroller would administer this program. And uh, what kind of things could they buy with that $5,200? Yeah, for a parent who knows their child better than anyone, they may understand that their child's thriving in English and social sciences, but really struggling in math and science. So that parent could use those dollars for tutoring, for an accredited private school, for speech therapy, other types of physical therapy. Again, whatever works best for that child, if they wanted to combine some curriculum, virtual education, there's such a variety of educational options out there already. We just wanna make them accessible to every parent. I mean, the accountability is, is gonna be the key thing that makes the legislature take this. Right? Sure, and, and you know, any school that would participate would have to be an accredited private school, so that's another form of accountability. Um, and since the funds would be audited quarterly, there would be, you know, ample amount of opportunity for us to catch any sort of fraud, waste, or abuse. Uh, audited by the state auditor or comptroller? Or the comptroller, whoever was administering the program. What do, you, what do you see the ideal candidates that would actually use this? Sure. Right now, there are more than 30 states that have a private school choice program with more than 60 programs in the country. So we have more than 25 years of data to, to examine and figure out who is benefiting from these programs. And across the country, the majority of the families that are taking advantage of this are low-income minority families that otherwise are stuck in a school that is not meeting their needs. Right now in Texas, we have close to 900,000 students that are in a failing school. So we know that there's a demand. We also know that there's over 100,000 students who are on a charter school wait list. So our goal in all of this is to make sure those families who are not being served get access to quality educational options that might better meet their needs. The political questions will be the Senate seems to be, you know, if you count the numbers, they got enough people to pass it out. The House is going to be the challenge, right? That's where you see it. We do. We, you know, legislatively, it's very frustrating that this has um, become a contentious discussion. Anytime we talk about anything regarding education reforms or opportunities to improve outcomes for students, it automatically equates to a voucher. And it's just simply not true. When we look at the policy differences based on these different types of programs, a voucher program is very different than a tax credit scholarship. That's very different than an education savings account. And what we've seen when it comes to legislative strategy is that the loudest voices in opposition to this are the same folks that are working so hard to protect the system and the, bureaucrat the bureaucratic process. So what we're trying to do is take the focus off the system and put the focus on the child. How um, that question kind of leads into this one, but the concern I would imagine most of the House members would have, at least at the committee, was that this, is take this would take money from their local school districts. I mean, that's what they, they care about, their local school districts. That's right. You know, I think when we talk about it in terms of dollars and cents, it always comes back to, again, protecting the system, protecting the brick and mortar schools that are providing jobs. In no way do we want this to take anyone's job away, but we want to take the focus, again, off of that brick and mortar school and put it on the available options that a student should have when it comes to their education. Again, there have been 19 empirical studies that show when students have access to choice programs, not only those participants in the program, their outcomes improve, but also those students who are staying in their traditional neighborhood schools.